missions. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap. And we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before. It was a few days before Christmas, 1968, when Apollo 8 sat on the pad. She was the first of a new kind, a moon rocket. This was the phoenix risen from the ashes of Apollo 1. The first Apollo crew did not die in vain. This was to be their testament. Thirty-six stories high, she had been fully fueled throughout the night. The liquid oxygen in her tanks caused ice to form on the outside of the craft. The extreme temperature differences between the air and the sub-zero fuel caused the metal skin of the rocket to expand and to contract. Everyone was on the pad agreed. It was as though the rocket was alive, breathing, straining at the leash. Earlier in the morning, astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders had made their final preparations before taking that long ride out to the main spacecraft. The minimum safe distance from a Saturn V at liftoff was three miles. The reason was simple. When fully fueled, the rocket contained the explosive power of an atomic bomb. As the clock counted down, the astronauts and all of us in launch control went through the pre-flight checks, our hands on the controls of the most powerful, most complex machine ever built. It had over two million separate systems, and to bring these men back alive, everything had to work perfectly. Each individual system had been tested, but what we didn't know was how they would perform when all two million began to work together. That moment would come when the countdown clock reached zero. If a maneuvering thruster failed, if communications broke down, if navigation was off by one degree, if any piece of the miles of wiring, circuits, relays, or valves was defective, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders would pay with their lives. As they sat, waiting for launch on that chill December morning, these three astronauts went back to what they had always been, test pilots. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8, right here where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made, destiny is being embraced. Thank you.
successfully orbited the moon, and the astronauts returned safely to the Earth. I know. I'm Jim Lovell, and I was one of the crew of this spacecraft, Apollo 8. We were the first men to see the surface of the moon from just a few miles away. But it was the hundreds of thousands of men and women who worked in that team, and the millions of people who supported the mission that really made it possible. That way, I guess, we all went to the moon. Now, uh, on the other side of those doors, you'll find an actual Saturn V moon rocket. It's still the most powerful, the most complex machine ever built. And I guess it's the only one that can take you to another planet. I actually got to fly one, second flight.